Assalamu alaikum. Once again, this is Sana Qureshi with the Ramzan special program. Now we move on to our next segment, health and fasting. For this, we have invited an expert nutritionist, Dr. Zubaida Sayed. Now let us see what does she have to tell us. Assalamu alaikum. I welcome all of you to this special program, health and fasting. Today, we got with us a special guest, Dr. Zubaida Sayed. Dr. Zubeda has done a PhD in nutrition and now she's the head nutritionist in the Columbia Hospital. She has also done her master's in Islamic studies. She's on a 10-day lecture tour in Mumbai. Our first question, could you please highlight and share the scientific benefits of fasting? Oh yes, so that is fasting has a lot of medical benefits. When we fast, it helps us in reducing levels of blood sugar, it helps lower cholesterol levels, and high blood pressure. When a person abstains from eating and drinking, the liver functions well. The digestive system gets rest. The toxins from the blood are eliminated which clears the skin. It increases the resistance of our body as well. It is helpful in weight management too. In fact, fasting is a complete detox program. Alhamdulillah, this is a vital information that you have shared with us. But we should always remember that a Muslim does not fast for the medical benefits. But a Muslim fasts because it is a command of Allah. These medical benefits are just a bonus for them and also a proof of Allah's wisdom. Indeed, since Dr. Zubaydah, you are in this field, are there any disadvantages of Islamic fasting? See, fasting is not only abstaining from eating and drinking. There are certain regulations that we need to follow. And if we follow these, well then, there will be no adverse effect on health and stamina. Our Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, has said, Take your pre dawn meal, for in it there is a blessing. And this itself shows us the importance of suhoor. Alhamdulillah, that's really interesting. It reminds me of the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, where he says, My ummah, that is my community, will be successful until they delay they are suhoor and do their iftar early. And there is another hadith that says, Don't miss suhoor, even if it is with a glass of water. Now we move on to another segment in which you, the viewers, are invited to ask questions by calling us on the number which is being displayed on your screen. Our first caller is Sister Rihanna from Bangalore. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. What's your question, please? Oh, yes. I have four children and I'm viewing your program along with my family. My whole family is here with me. MashaAllah, you are doing a very good job. Watching all this, you are gaining a lot of knowledge. But Sister Rihanna, what's your question? Please ask. Yes, yes. My question to you is, my sister-in-law is pregnant and, she, and it is difficult for her to fast. Can she give up fasting? Thank you for calling in, Sister Rihanna. We have a similar question sent on email by Nazira Khan. So doctor, when can a Muslim miss his or her fast? Yes, there are categories of people who can be exempted from fasting. They are pregnant ladies, menstruating women, mentally imbalanced, nursing mothers, the travelers, the children, the sick and elderly who cannot fast due to weakness. These fasts are missed. Is there any compensation for it? Good question. The pregnant women, the nursing mothers, the menstruating women, the travelers and the sick have to compensate for these missed fasts by fasting in other months besides Ramadan, before the next Ramadan. The sick person and the elderly have to, who cannot fast at all have to compensate by giving fidya. Could you please enlighten us on the concept of fidya? Okay, fidya is the giving of food or money to the poor people. Feeding a poor person with the same quality food as we ourselves eat or giving him an equivalent amount of money is fidya. Now let's take another call from Sister Reshma who's asking a question from Hyderabad. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. I would like to ask a question to Dr. Zubeda. Alhamdulillah, the environment of our home is very Islamic. My children go to fast, but my father-in-law says that if we make our children fast, then their health will be affected. So my question is, should we make children fast? Jazakallah, you've asked a very important question. So doctor, is there any particular age for fasting? 
And is there any harm in making small children fast? There is no such specific age. This depends on the environment in the house. Those who have not been brought up in an Islamic way may find it very difficult to fast even when fasting becomes a fard on them. I know of an Islamic school where the children aged three are able to keep a couple of fasts and some five years old children fast for the whole month of Ramadan. Mashallah, that's really pleasing to know. And as we come to know from sister's question that they have an Islamic environment at their house. Yes, that's good. But along with the Islamic environment at home, the parents should also keep in mind the health of children. The children should be given a good and nutritious suhoor. For example, dates are a very good source of nutrients. They are rich in sugar and provide instant energy, as well as they are a good source of potassium and manganese. Bananas are also very good for children. Now let's take another call from Sister Seema, who's asking a question from Kashmir. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, beta. Hello. Hello, beta. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Please go on. Beta, I want to ask you that does vomiting break one's fast? Jazakallah for your question. The sister wants to know if vomiting nullifies our fast. Also, if you could explain in detail what invalidates our fasting. Yes, there are two categories in this. If a person unintentionally vomits, it does not break his fast. But if a person intentionally vomits, then the fast is nullified. Also, if a person eats due to forgetfulness, it does not break his fast. Jazakallah, Dr. Zubeda. It was indeed a very informative session. So viewers, I hope you enjoyed the special program. To write in to tell us how you like the program. May we all have a spiritually fulfilling and a healthy Ramadan until then. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. And now we bring to you crime reporting in Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the news bulletin this afternoon. I am Sarah Shakil with my colleague Bushra Wakil. This bulletin will bring to you the condition of the Ummah during the holy month of Ramadan. The headlines first. Made of thar so very delicious, for God Asur Salah so precious. Spent the big night trying to get the game right. Telling lies was a game, all in Allah's name. That's what the youth so bright did the divine night. This is the Ummah's plight. Eve teasing girls in the malls through salams to all, led to the Muslim boys downfall. Slept so tight throughout the night, so who was missed got up at light. Iftar was so wonderful that a Maghrib Salah made forgetful. So these were headlines for today. Besides this, we shall view other news too. But now on to the main news. Made iftar so very delicious. For God, Asr Salah, so precious. One lady from Kuala Lumpur made 21 dishes for iftar. She was busy preparing iftar since dawn. But in the process, she missed her Asr Salah. According to our sources, this crime has been an arise amongst the Muslim women. Spent the big night trying to get the game right. Lailatul Qadr is meant for ibadah and worship. Instead of praying on this occasion, the Muslim youth were found playing cards in the by lanes throughout the night. This too is a reason for concern in our ummah. Telling lies was a game, all in Allah's name. That's what the youth so bright did in the divine night. Twelve Muslim youth were arrested last night. These were the same boys who had left their homes informing their parents that they will be spending the night praying in the mosque. But these very boys were found loitering around the beach front. Eve teasing girls in the malls to salams to all led to the Muslim boys downfall. It has been observed that Eve teasing is on a rise. This filthy behavior does not even stop during the holy month of Ramadan. This is one of the shameless deeds that the Muslim youth is exhibiting throughout the year. The Sunnah Rehabilitation Center has organized a three-day workshop on respect and honor of women. 
especially for this errant youth. Slept so tight throughout the night, so who was missed got a patch light. Twenty people were sent to the Sunnah Rehabilitation Center yesterday. These were the same people who hardly ever got up for suhoor. They loved to sleep so much that they skipped their suhoor and did not even have a glass of milk or water. After the arrest, the Ramzan court has decided to send them to the Sunnah Rehabilitation Center so that they can learn the etiquettes of suhoor. We would also like to inform you that if you know of a person who does not do suhoor, he too can be sent to the Sunnah Rehab Center. Iftar was so wonderful that a Maghrib Salah made forgetful. After Sir Salah, it's time for Maghrib. Yes, my dear viewers, this is a story of a household in Canada who used to organize a very sumptuous and elaborate iftar. They spent so much of time in tasting their lavish dishes that they not only missed their Maghrib Salah, but it went on till one could hear the Muazzin's call for Isha. Now it's time for other headlines. Laborers' union better be alert. In Ramadan, servants are treated like dirt. Sister Alia from Kenya has made a servant's log to such an extent that she was unable to fast in the holy month of Ramadan due to weakness and fatigue. The director of Global Muslim Women's Board, Sister Zahida Sayyid, has advised the Muslim women that they should share their work at least in the holy month of Ramadan so that everyone can reap the benefits of this holy month. Decorating houses a must for Eid. Worship in the last 10 days was paid no heed. The women of Madison spent so much of time in cleaning their houses that they did not have the time, the time for Ibadah during the last 10 days of the holy month. Our channel would like to inform our viewers to clean their houses before the onset of Ramadan to avoid such mishaps. I repeat, it is such a disastrous shortcoming among the Muslims worldwide that we fail to take the advantage of these special nights. So what if I miss some fast? At least in the exams I will surely pass. Masira from Birmingham told her mother that she would have to miss her fast during exams. Her mother was convinced, thinking that in such competitive times, compromising on fast is a must. It has been observed that very often obligatory deeds are forgot for the sake of exams. Our sources reveal that the parents are to be held responsible for this grave crime. Moving on to the business news this afternoon. Business loan on interest. Fard was put at rest. The royal Suleiman family of Zulinesia did not pay zakat because they believed that the debtors need not pay zakat. They had recently taken a loan to start the 23rd factory in Bahrain. We would like to inform our viewers that if your assets are above Nisab level, then zakat is further on you. That brings us to the end of the bulletin. Breaking news! Breaking news! I would like to inform our viewers that this is an exclusive news item which will be reported first only on our channel. This incident has just occurred. And it is the speciality of our channel that we bring exclusive news coverage from across the globe just for you. In a short while, you'll see on its screens two hardcore criminals. They have committed a very sickening and frightening crime. Here they come. Have a good look at them. These ladies are found everywhere. You may see them at malls, social gatherings, in your houses too. Would you like to know the crime they have committed? The crime is so disgusting that it will leave you perplexed. Yes, they are cannibals, cannibals of the worst kind. Not only do they eat the flesh of humans, but they have done an abhorrible crime of eating the flesh of their own dead sister. You guessed it right, they are backbiters from Brisbane. They were caught backbiting in their own backyard, that too during the holy month of Ramadan. The Ramadan court has put a ban on them from any social or public gathering for the next two months. They have also sent an order forbidding them talking in these two months. Let me remind our viewers that the purpose of our channel is not to censor. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the last day of our special Ramadan program. Now as we are reaching to the end of Ramadan, let us see what the sister is doing in her room in one of the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Amin, 
May Allah accept her dua. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. Wa ma adraka ma laylatul qadr. Laylatul qadr khayrun min alf shahr. تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أم سلام هي حتى مثل الفجر. O oh Allah, O oh the most gracious, the most merciful, this is your mercy that today I am raising my hands and supplicating to you in these blessed nights. This night. in which we search for Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr is that blessed night during which the Qur'an was revealed. Laylatul Qadr in which the angels and the spirit descend. Laylatul Qadr whose worship is better than the worship of a thousand months. There is peace during this night. O oh Allah, indeed, you are the most gracious the most merciful. You descend to the lowest heaven every night and say to your believing servants, is there anyone who is asking forgiveness from me so that I can forgive him? Is there anyone who is supplicating so that I may accept his supplication? Allahumma inna ka'afoon tuhibbul afa fafani. Allahumma inna ka'afoon تُحِبُّ الْأَفَى فَافَ عَنِّي O Allah, indeed, you are the forgiver. You love forgiveness. So forgive me. O Allah, please accept this prayer. O Allah, please accept our supplications this night. Accept our worship. Have mercy on our parents. Just like the way they have been merciful to us. O Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Sami' al Basir. There are so many Muslims who aren't aware of the importance of this blessed night. O oh Allah, please give them righteous guidance. Ihdina Surat al Mustaqim. O oh Allah, this world is full of jealousy. Relations are going sour. O oh Allah, Please open their hearts to the right path. Jealousy and envy has led to so many wrong actions. O oh Allah, enable us to serve in your way. O oh Allah, there was a time when the mosques would be full and the markets would be empty. But now the mosques are vacant and the markets are full. O oh Allah, Grant us with more serenity in the mosques. O oh Allah, accept our supplication. Formerly, the Quran was in the hearts of the Muslims. But today, it is kept in our houses and hung around our necks. O oh Allah, give us guidance to read, understand and act upon it. O oh Allah, the Muslims are being oppressed The enemies are attacking our homes. We are being robbed. O oh Allah, please have mercy on the Muslim Ummah. Accept our supplication. O oh Allah, accept our supplication. The Muslims say there is no effect in our prayers. This reminds me of a hadith that says, when one earns in a haram way, when one eats in a haram way, when one dresses the haram way, Then how can the prayers be accepted? Then how can the prayers be accepted? O oh Allah, give us honor for whomsoever you give honor. No one can degrade. But whomever you degrade, no one can honor. O oh Allah, give us back our honor. Accept our prayer. O oh Allah, accept our prayer and forgive us. Rabbana atina fid dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati. حسنة وقنا عذاب النار آمين يا رب العالمين يا رحم الرحيمين يا رب العالمين آمين May Allah accept her dua
Eid Mubarak to you all. Taqabbalahu minna wa minkum. Now we bring to you our live telecast from right outside the Eidgah with our correspondent Zara. Yes, yes, Sana, I can hear you. At this joyous moment of Eid, we are standing outside one of the largest Eidgah in Mumbai at Nagpara. Here is an exclusive telecast on Peace News for our viewers. And as you can see, the Eid Salah is over and so is the Khutbah. I will ask the camera person to pan the camera across so that you can see how people are hugging and greeting each other. Everyone is dressed up for Eid. Peace News has organized an on-the-spot quiz contest in this special event of Eid. Lots of prizes to be won. Come on. Who is ready? Who will answer the first question? I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. What was the topic of today's Khutbah? Khutbah. Khutbah. Actually, I didn't understand your question. I mean... The topic of the sermon which the Imam gave after the Eid Salah is called Khutbah. Oh, I was sitting behind. Actually, I was late for a Salah. Couldn't hear anything. Couldn't meet anyone. Actually, I meet everyone. I was busy chatting behind. Oh yes, come to think of it. The Imam was saying something. Oh, wrong answer. Anyone else? Oh, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam. Can you tell me what was the topic of today's Khutbah? What topic of Khutbah? Will I get a prize? Must have been the same old thing. Iraq, Pakistan, Palestine. What have we to do with their politics? As it is, kids were making so much of noise. I couldn't hear anything. And on top of that, the mic system is too loud. Most got a headache. Oh, wrong answer. Anyone else? Can you tell me what was the topic of the khutbah? Oh, yes. The topic of the khutbah was the Muslim youth and how they are wasting their precious time and talent in wrong deeds. Correct answer, sister. And here is your prize. Oh God, is the Salah on? Oh no, and is the Salah again? Oh, here is our lost sister. What happened? Oh, what do I do? First of all, the clothes are not tied. Then I lost my one hearing. Could it find it? Could it find it? Could it find it? Later I found it under the table. Then, no taxi, no taxi, no taxi. I researched so much of difficulty. Still, I didn't get the salah. Since the past three years, I haven't got a single eat salah. My bad luck, my bad luck, my bad luck. Inshallah, from next year, if you start getting very early, you might get the jamaat, get the jamaat, get the jamaat. Who's there? Assalamu alaikum, sister. Wa alaikum assalam. Oh, is it necessary for us to come to Eidgah? You're on satellite TV, answer correctly and win a gift pamper. Oh, am I on TV? Why didn't you tell me earlier? I am Latifa. But people call me Lady Latifa. How's my dress? Isn't it pretty? I love this combination. Blue and purple. I got it specially made from. Alright, alright. Wrong answer. Okay, sister. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Is it necessary for us to come to Eidgah? Going to Eidgah on Eid is sunnat e mokeda for the gents as well as for the ladies. In fact, the Prophet, peace be upon him, has recommended this for the women too. The gathering here in large numbers, praying together, shows our unity and our strength. Correct answer, sister, and here's your prize. Jazakallah. Assalamu 
Assalamualaikum sister. Waalaikum assalam. Can you tell me what is Sadqat al-Fitr? Sadqat al-Fitr or Zakat al-Fitr is that charity which is given at the end of Ramadan before the Eid al-Fitr Salam which is given in the form of money or grains. But what is the reason behind it to give it before the Eid Salam? The reason why it is given before the Eid Salam is firstly to help our Muslim brethren who do not have the means to celebrate this joyous moment of Eid. And secondly, it is to compensate for any drawbacks in our worship. Correct answer sister and here is your prize. And here comes auntie. So auntie, did you fast the whole month of Ramadan? What? Do you expect me to fast for the whole month? This is because of me that the whole family could fast for the whole month. Who will cook the delicacies for the iftar? And who shops for all of them? It's because of me that they fast. So I am the most deserving person for the rewards. I make it so easy for them. But auntie, let me tell you that the most deserving person to celebrate Eid is the one who fasts the whole month of Ramadan and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, wrong answer. Anyone else? Okay, can you tell me? Today is Eid and what are your plans for today? Because the literal meaning of Eid is recurring happiness. We have fasted for the whole month. So today, we are going to enjoy ourselves. The first thing we will do is eat, eat and eat. This is truly recurring happiness. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Today is Eid and what are your plans for today? Each one has their own way of celebrating Eid within the limits of Sharia. The whole family will meet for dinner. We will exchange gifts. The elders will give Eidi. We will have a lot of fun. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He blessed us with this year's Eid. Jazakallah. Eid Mubarak to all our viewers. Taqabbalahu minna wa minkum. With camera person Rabia Khan, Zara reporting live from Mumbai, Peace News. Alhamdulillah, this brings us to the end of our Ramadan special program. I hope this was very beneficial for all of us. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.